What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode number 14 of Flight Time. Uh, we got an interesting episode for you guys today. We have sort of like a multi-topic discussion. Um, if you have been following along online, you may have saw Drone DJ put out an article talking about the Phantom line has been basically removed from the U.S. stores. And um, there's been some new drones released recently from both Unique and Parrot. So it seems like people are putting drones out and DJI is removing them, at least from us in the States here. Yeah, so um, the Phantom, one of my favorite drones, uh, hasn't hasn't really been flown all that much. I feel like I've been gravitating more towards the Mavic and more towards the Inspire. And in a previous episode, I said how um, you know I'm really not big on the Phantom anymore. So I'm not sure what their move is, um, why they're removing it from the United States. Ken, I think you had a pretty good assumption if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to re say that. Yeah. So 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 my here's my thought on them removing it from the U.S. based stores because I, I think it primarily has to do with tariffs and given the fact that the Phantom line is now what what is it like four years old three years old? Uh, I mean the, yeah the Fa- the Phantom Four was released in 2016 spring of 2016 so we're coming up on okay. four years. Almost, almost four years with that very same model. And I can't imagine them importing very many of them because the demand may not be quite as drastic as, let's say, the Mavic line yeah. or maybe some of their other drones. So if they don't have them here, naturally it's going to cost them more for something that they're not maybe producing many of. So just removing it all together from a U.S.-based purchase makes a lot of sense, although I'm sure it may upset some people. But now that you say that, four years old, <laughs> that's insane, though. It's been on the market and been that dominant for that many years. Could you imagine using like a four-year-old computer to edit all of your photos or, or all your videos? Or, or imagine using like a four-year-old phone and how outdated it would feel, you know? I mean, I'm sure that's the equivalent to how Windows users feel every time they open up a you know Adobe Premiere, but why uh, why are you trashing on Windows when you only use Windows? Uh, no, I don't only use Windows. <laughs> let me let me clarify. I still use I use Final Cut periodically lately. I've been dabbling. And I sort of I may, I may tinder over to the dark side very soon permanently, but yeah, I still use Premiere. But it's still it it, it hurts. Uh, but yeah, I, I I was reading the article and I, I don't really read Drone DJ often. Like sometimes the articles, I'm just like you know because they put out so many different articles daily. Obviously, that's what they are. They're a news source. But um, this one sort of caught my attention, and it's just sort of it, it just seems like the right time for them to pull it, especially with everything that's going on in the trade war. And I hate to keep bringing it up, but it's sort of a pivotal you know, thing that's happening right now and you're seeing companies, you know, sort of shift uh, the paradigm of, of how they're importing products here into the United States. And, and for the first time ever, I think we have it pretty bad in comparison to like, let's say Australia and, and Canada, you know, I know those I, guys were paying astronomically for things. I always hear about these other people in different countries uh, paying a lot more money. And, and there's even some people that try to get around it by almost like buying from the United States and then getting it shipped to them. I mean, even that can be less expensive than directly importing it. Um, now, when, when we were first talking about what we wanted to talk about in this episode, uh, I was talking about how I wanted to name it like DJI can't keep their drones in stock because it's the truth. I feel like you bounce around and things are in stock. They're out of stock. Um, Just the other day when we were, I forget which podcast we were recording, um, but the Pro was in stock, the Mavic 2 Pro, but the Mavic 2 Zoom was out of stock and now it's in stock. So I kind of wonder what DJI does. Oh, I'm, I'm looking here. The Mavic 2 Zoom is actually still out of stock. You can't get the Mavic 2 Zoom. That, as well as the smart controller version of the Mavic 2 Zoom, they're both out of stock. And it, it kind of makes me think all the way back to when the original Mavic Pro came out. Do you remember how hard it was to get a hold of one? Oh my gosh, they, they were absolutely nowhere. And then even when they first, I think there was like a, a manufacturer issue as well that they had to fix. So it put put delivery times even further back. 
but yeah, I remember that. It was a pain in the neck to try to get one of those in your hand. It's it's crazy because, you know, stock is jumping around. Even if you look, and, and this is totally unrelated, but if you look at the Osmo Mobile 3, I'm pretty sure if you put it in your cart, it says that it's going to start shipping. Well, now it says estimated to ship 7 to 10 business days after payment confirmation. Um, but originally, like a couple of days ago, it said you had to wait between 20 and 25 days. So I really wonder yeah. what DJI's method is for their whole supply chain, how much they keep in stock, how much they make up front. I mean, it really does make me wonder because when these new products release, if you don't buy it within the first hour or two, you're going to have to wait weeks before you get one. Which is which is sort of, it's sort of ironic because these aren't like mobile phones. I know like, you know, we're, we're going to be seeing a new iPhone here very shortly. And I know every single iPhone release, I've been awake at 2 a.m. Yeah and ordered ordered my phone because I knew if I didn't order my phone, gosh, that sounds very fanboyish, but um, if I didn't order my phone, I wasn't going to be able to get it. It wouldn't ship for you know a very long time. So um, yeah, it's sort of weird that they have that, that presence in the market. But you know what I think is cool though, is we've recently seen two other manufacturers just announce new drones. Yeah, real, real quick, let, let's close up this topic on DJI. Um, the Mavic Air is out of stock too. Like you can buy the white version, you can't buy the red version at all. the The drone itself and the Fly More combo Nobody are out red. of stock, and the Onyx Black drone, the Onyx Black Mavic Air, you can't buy just the drone. You've got to buy the Fly More combo because just the drone itself is out of stock. So it it just it makes it, me wonder. Like why is this wonder, drone? Man. Why is this drone that's so old out of stock? Well, you know, personally, I think they leave their stuff up there way too long. Mm, yeah. Me personally, um, <clears throat> something that I noticed, um, Ross Fifty One Drones tweeted out too when we were talking about pricing. They increased the price of their their service as well for that DJI Care, Care Refresh. Did you know they increased the price of that as well? I think that they increased it by fifteen percent, and that makes sense because they're going to be. And I wonder if on top of that, the drones you have to buy from them, like at the reduced amount, if that price went up as well, because technically they've got to import another drone to send to you, you know? Sure. I mean, it's, you know, anything's possible in that regard. The Osmo Pocket seemingly still relatively cheap at $319. Oh. And I shouldn't say relatively cheap, but 319 I, bucks. For I just Osmo recently Pocket. got an email from DJI saying that it was on sale. So it sounds like... Um, you know, maybe with the, the release of the action, sale. they're trying to get rid of some of the pockets. Uh, I really don't know. Um, but let's segue into one of these other two drones that were released. I guess let's first talk about the Anafi FPV because this is one that's really not all that new. This is the same body style. It's really got a lot of the same features, the same specs, the same build. Um, and even like on the surface, it's kind of hard to understand exactly what's different about this drone other than the fact there, that it comes there with isn't goggles. anything. So, so from my understanding, I'm just reading, getting caught up here on, on this ve- on this vehicle, on this drone. Mm-hmm. The Anafi FPV is just the Anafi, 100%. There is nothing different about the chassis of this drone. However, you're now going to get a set of FPV goggles, and this is very reminiscent of what Parrot used to do in the past with the Bebop drones. They would produce the Bebop, and then they would have the Bebop, and then they would include Bebop goggles, and mm-hmm. so so nothing different here. However, in the commercial that they put out there, they made it seem as if you were going to like get this full-on FPV immersive experience, and the drone was moving very much like a FPV drone what would. So I'm sort of wondering if they're going to include new modes that will allow it to do such Mm -hmm. because i mean i'm watching video of this thing and it's cooking i know that i got the um the update for the free flight app on my phone and it introduced the two new uh modes it's got the arcade mode and it's got the racing mode the racing preset um so now rather than just film in sport what you have like these two different presets you can also create a cinematic and a racing preset so that should be pretty interesting um I really wish that rather than just give you film, sports, cinematic, and racing, they give you a couple of other custom modes so that you can just jump around sure. between them. Um, I'm not one for for going and trying to turn a cinematic, I guess, drone into an FPV drone. I mean, 
these things they're going to give you an a, like somewhat of an experience that you're flying an FPV drone and and I'm not going to say that I fly FPV because I don't and I know that that's a very tight knit community within the drone community it's like a a sub community um, and the yeah, people like the people cult. looking at like the Mavic Air or sorry not the Mavic Air the original Mavic Pro that had that um, that that like flight mode where it would kind of make you feel like you're flying like a fixed wing plane um they tried to introduce those little gimmicks but at the end of the day it, it's just not enough like if you're a true fpv flyer you're never gonna want to get this yeah no no de- definitely definitely if if you fly fpv you're this is not going to do it for you i mean they're going to have some similarities i'm sure but it's not going to be a full bore replacement. And again, I, I think the Anafi was a pretty good drone. Again, I was pretty rough on the Anafi when it first came out because I had it like literally right when it came out mm-hmm. and there were still a lot of software glitches with it and it, it wasn't very polished. And I think the biggest problem is every time a new drone comes out, you sort of have that that golden bar of drones you've had before, whether it was, you know, Altel's offering or dji's offering and you compare everything to that because yeah. that's your metric and that's what i was doing i think that was a big mistake because this was nothing like you know either one of those drones but i think now it's had time to mature and they can sort of make little renditions to it but without having to build a whole new one one nice thing about the parrot is at least here in the united states is there is no additional tariff or or taxes to have those shipped here because it's a French company, so it's sort of a nice offering. Yeah, and what are they manufactured in France too? Um, I believe they're they're manufactured elsewhere, but it's not China. Okay, so they are imported from France. They're they're definitely not made in. Uh, they're definitely not made there. They're made they're made elsewhere. I'm I'm sure. Let's probably like I th- I think I saw something that said Taiwan or something on one of the. The okay. units that I had, so which isn't surprising because there's a lot of drones that aren't necessarily made in Shenzhen. They're like made in Taiwan or other overseas, Korea even. Which I mean, there's a lot of manufacturing there. But that was that's one of the drones that was announced. Well, hold Obviously, on, hold on. Let, let's not yeah, move go ahead, on. Man. I, I do want to say one thing. Um, I really like that backpack that it comes with. the The backpack looks pretty. What's cool. your obsession with backpacks, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I th- I think that it looks cool. Um, you like backpacks? I-, I think that there are certain companies that try to like release backpacks, but they're just sure. like totally unusable. Um, DJI does a it's really a good, good looking backpack, though. It-, it is, and DJI does a really good job at um, giving you like bags that are usable. And I think that this is one that could be usable. Another thing that I want to mention about the Anafi, and then we'll move on to whatever you wanted to talk about, um, is the fact that Parrot is pretty much just trying to squeeze as much as they can out of the Anafi design. Because as long as they can keep that same drone, continue to move forward with that body style, they're just going to be able to make even more money. They don't need to put more research and development into creating a whole brand new drone. And there's a lot of other companies that do this, right? I mean, we've seen Apple do it. They always come out with their 10, or, or they always come out with like their, their iPhone and then the S version, or like a version that uses the same body and then it's tweaked internally so it's a way for them to cut on costs and i think that you know that's why this fpv version is not all that much different um but it does right. offer at least a brand new experience which is pretty cool yeah and and what i would have loved to see them do is to just fix some of the things that you know people were griping about with the first anafi like the controller i mean for me it's sort of a love hate like i don't like how your phone goes in there too many times I've had my phone pop out of the Anafi controller. Really? Uh, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if you've ever had that. We, okay, so I guess I should add the the prefix that I use a phone case. So I know that that could be a little goofy in that particular unit. You rock it caseless, so you may not have had any problems <laughs> with that. I, I've actually been putting a case on my phone recently. I have the, uh, the Moment case on just if I'm shooting with a lens. Um, so yeah, look, the Anafi FPV, not much crazy to talk about. They have those new FPV goggles, but I think that even with those goggles, um, I'm pretty sure you slide your phone in there, right? They're just like a holder. You know, I'm not, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing it quite like that. I mean, it's possible, but you know, again, with these advertisement videos, they're sort of deceptive. So I'm not, I'm not seeing it hold the phone. 
the reason the reason that I say this is because they would give you some sort of like information about the goggles on like the pixels per inch and things like that, but they're not saying like the resolution of the screen. So I'm pretty sure you just slide your okay. phone in there. Well, let me let me go ahead and put it to you like this. So I'm looking at this video of them doing the FPV experience, and the guy is looking down at the controller. His phone is still in the controller, and the girl is slipping on the goggles almost as if he's flying and she's just watching. Mhm. So I So that's sort so of interesting. The Verge's article is titled Parrot's newest drone comes with smartphone powered FPV goggles. Um smartphone powered FPV goggles. Also that um that uh that backpack can be used as like a launching pad it says, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm not going to waste too much time on here. Oh, it says, um, Parrot's modular smartphone-powered approach to FPV headsets is bound to offer a lower-resolution experience than the purpose-built goggles sold by companies like DJI or Fat Shark. It's compatible with sure. smartphones as big as 6.5 inches, though splitting a smartphone screen to two eyes tends to be a lousy experience. So it's not the best. You're going to have to slide your phone in there and just as you know this article says it, it's it's not going to be the best experience yeah, it's going to reduce the resolution reduce the overall quality and i mean i guess that's the price you pay for something to be a little less expensive mm-hmm. if that makes sense so, uh, i'll tell you that go, go ahead. ahead i'll tell you that i've tried using an fpv experience like this on a drone um Matter of fact, I tried it. Probably the worst thing I could ever do is try this on one of the ROVs, um, the Five Fish ships with like, it ships with FPV goggles. Yeah. Worst thing to do on a boat. Worst thing. It's like the Google Cardboard. It's just like it's like just it's it's not a good experience. I understand. No, it was not. I understand that with VR, they're trying anything and everything that they can to like get people to use it and try it by cutting costs but that's not the way that you get people to try VR because VR is it's something that was so hyped up and so, has just died down so much i mean VR gaming it really has it it's just it's it's not something that i want to do um but anyway look the the Anafi FPV really nothing crazy new about that. I can't believe we even spent like ten minutes talking about it. But now let's move on to the Mantis G. Uh, we we haven't had much new to talk about from Unique, but that's not saying much because we really haven't had much new to talk about from DJI either. Um, but you know, Ken, you made this video on the Mantis G. In fact, the way that I found out that. Unique was releasing a drone was through your video, um, and I'm not gonna lie. Some of these specs stand out. The the one in particular is the 33 minute flight time. Yeah, so so they have a 33 minute flight time, but again, in parentheses, they have in no wind environment at a con- constant speed of okay. They they change it now. Now it's 15.5 miles per hour. Yesterday I had it out to 25 kilometers. So if you're doing 15 miles per hour, 15.5 miles per hour you can achieve 33 minutes of flight with the wind in optimal conditions. That's that's interesting, but here's the thing is we know that all of these companies tend to sort of yeah. I'm not going to say fudge the numbers, um but but I personally have never gotten 31 minutes out of my Mavic 2 Pro. I haven't gotten 27 minutes out of my Inspire 2. I'm not necessarily sure how they come up with these numbers on flight time, but we can kind of assume that whatever the flight time oh. is, subtract about 30 30, 25% off of that number, and you're going to get sure. your actual flight time. So they've actually, since yesterday, I'm coming back to the page where I was at, we've got more specifications here. So there is more specs listed on the website now. Uh, people were also asking, you know, what's the deal with the uh, the video stabilization? Is it a, you know, digital stabilization now through software, or is it a, you know, a mechanical gimbal? And so that it is a two axis mechanical gimbal and I'm sure that third axis is probably um, balanced or or stabilized via Mm -hmm. software but at least we now have a two axis gimbal yeah and so this is this is aimed to compete with the Mavic Air 
and it does some things a little bit better than the Mavic Air. I mean, for one is the flight time. Obviously, the Mavic Air has 21 minutes. The Mantis G has 33 minutes. But also, look at how old the Mavic Air is. It's almost two years sure. old. So it, it, it's expected for this to be better in certain ways. Um, there's, there's do- like, you know, looking over this, I mean, I, I get it. A lot of people are probably gun shy when it comes to Unique because they have a, a really bad track record. I know I, for one, I troll Unique every chance I can get (laughs) and um, this was one drone you know as I started looking over the specifications I was sort of like oh okay this is this is actually you know really not that bad like maximum flight speed of you know 44.5 miles per hour so basically it can do 45 miles per hour Mm -hmm. again in in optimal condition it can fly for 2.2 miles I mean that's I mean what more do you really need I think the range of the Mavic Air was what 2.2 2.2 miles or 2.5 miles or something like yep. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the price I mean, is so very similar. Well, actually, right now, for some reason, I'm getting the price in euros. It uh, should be 6.99 US. It's 6.99 euros, and it's only giving me the option to change between Europe and uh, Deutschland, Dutch. So interesting. I'm I'm, I'm on the website now. Um, I'm on Unique because you know Unique has like two different um, two different sites. Yeah, that's um, so. If I go to here, it's six ninety six hundred ninety nine dollars um, US. So six ninety nine US uh, Mantis G. Yeah, it, I mean it's looking I'm, pretty interesting. I'm really interested no to see. Yet. I don't know if it's shipping yet. I'm really interested to see how this how this little drone flies. Um, I probably won't be one of the first people to go out and buy it. It's just, e- even the Mavic Air, I think it's a great drone, but it really just doesn't suit me. Um, I'm looking for something just a little bit better. Uh, these these drones, they kind of they kind of hit a little bit below the, the belt. I want something that, that can really pack a punch. And um, it's it, that's not me just trying to, I mean, it's not that I'm picky, but it's just that I've gotten so used to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Inspire 2 that... It's going to be hard to to go any lower than that. Like having a smaller yeah, I, I sensor. I think these are more. These are going to be more geared towards that beginner, like first time drone pilot, like somebody who's looking, like they're curious about a drone, but they want something just better than your average toy drone. Yeah, and do you know what's great about these drones is that they offer you some room to grow. Um, and I think even like if you go with a Spark, that gives you some room to grow as well. Whenever somebody asks me, they say, oh, yeah. well, you know, I want to get into drones. What's a good drone to get? I never recommend like one of those cheap starter GPS drones off of Amazon. Um, I'll always recommend something like the Paradinafi. I'll always recommend something like the Mavic Air or the Spark because there's room to grow in those. Like they, They're a great starter drone. You can get it up in the air. You can zip around and then you can really you can really squeeze a lot out of those drones until you say all right it's time for me to upgrade i um yeah i I'm, i agree i agree with that i'm looking I mean, at this frame and the arms are the arms are pretty thin it's it's going to be pretty interesting to see like how big this thing is when i'm when i or when somebody is holding it in their hand because you can get a sense of like what the dimensions are and kind of what it looks like through pictures and stuff, but it's something I really can't wait to see somebody like holding. Maybe even myself. Who knows? But you still. know what it sort of it sort of looks like. It looks like a Hubson Zeno in a Mavic Air had a, an affair at the Safari Hotel. Yeah. And this this came out like mm-hmm. this is this is the end result. You got a Mantis G. Like it's not you know it's sort of weird because the gimbal looks like to me. That silver looks a little plasticky. It looks, I don't know, it looks weird. Somebody else was asking me, I saw like several comments and they were like, does it have smart batteries? The Mantis G or the Mantis Q doesn't have smart batteries, nor does any of the other unique drones. Mm. And I know that was a big problem. Unique experience was battery failures because these things wouldn't discharge properly. Yeah. And you couldn't get cycle counts. So I don't know if it does. I can't imagine that they wouldn't have finally done that. The name and schematic of this is also weird. You put G before Q, but Q came first in the <laughs> unique world. I, I don't know. I, I just sometimes I don't under I don't understand. I mean, what does the G stand for? Great. I'm, I, I'm I don't know. I'm really interested to see how loud it is because the Mavic Air that was one loud drone. Um, and I think yes, I think it was loud. because of the propellers. I remember uh, seeing some people 
they they made videos on the master air screw props and they showed off how quiet they were uh, so I wonder about this drone if it's going to be loud and annoying or if it's going to be an actual good pitch that that's that's one of the biggest downfalls of the Mavic Air was just how loud it was I mean it was it was unnecessarily loud um, the it was it was incredibly obnoxious like Here. people would stare at me when I would fly it. I was so happy when I finally sold it. I know. Now, here's the one thing. And actually, I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Those LEDs look horrible. The, the LEDs look cheap. It's got multiple LEDs, if you, if you didn't it, notice. But they're all the same. They look cheap. They're, they're poorly integrated, in my opinion. I think that the best drone would have some big, beefy LEDs, some big lights that are like no joke uh we're definitely going to see some anti-collision lighting being implemented into drones moving forward so why not just integrate the anti-collision lighting with the lights that are already on the drone rather than just say all right let's slap one right on top why not integrate it right into the lights that are already on there i mean that that just makes the most sense to me with this being a unique drone i think anti-collision should come standard because (laughs) these things have a tendency of flying away that there should be anti-collision. Dude, and you're I think relentless. they should also sell you insurance. I know. I am sorry. I apologize, unique fans. Uh, but it's... I was thinking about when I was looking at the underneath it, like, part of me was like, ah, it's sort of cool. At first, I thought they were stickers or something. I was like, oh, that doesn't make sense. And the more I watched that video and looked, it, it was. I was like, oh, wait a second. You know, that's actually LEDs. The other thing I hate with all these promo videos is I'm not entirely sure... Any of that footage was was shot with the Mantis G because mm-hmm. the footage just looked way too freaking dreamy, and like the white balance was just like I, I don't know like they had a very like yellowish vibe yeah to the video like they were trying to go for a certain look and I'm just not really sure given the color profiles that this could necessarily achieve that I'm not gonna doubt it but the video looked pretty good it did you know, for what. I can assume it did look good and we're viewing this in a very compressed environment so you know this this video shot with the ground-based camera could look a lot better if you're looking at it through an editing software there's one thing that unique has beaten all other at least that I can think of all other drone companies um, to and that is voice control you you've heard me preach about it before I think that voice control first of all in our everyday lives is going to be very helpful uh the, the one person that i watch that preaches about voices um gary v he was talks about how voice is taking over and it's true because if i say um to my my alexa or or my google or or my home pod and i say i will actually probably just alexa if i say order me this order me dove soap or order me soap or order me pants Who's going to be the first company that gets to send it to me? That, that's totally unrelated. But look, I think that voice is going to be huge in the future. With our phones, we use it all the time. With our smart speakers, we use it all the time. And think about how easy it would be with your drone to say, uh, hey, Autel, hey, DJI, start recording. Hey, DJI, set my white balance to 4,000. I mean... And you would send that voice command to the controller, I'm, I'm assuming, and yeah. it would relay that that signal to the drone or you would speak through your phone i mean it's already got the built-in microphone uh you right can, you can relay the in, the information right through your phone just like how with the mavic 2 enterprise zoom and dual you can relay those voice messages through the speaker i mean just use the onboard microphone on the actual mobile device itself and you could do so many things so fast because i know that as i'm flying and i'm trying to multitask like let's say i know i need to fly 2,000 feet out and I know that when I get there, I need to change my return home altitude. I try to do everything all at the same time, and that leads to me flying while also not really looking at what I'm flying. Like, I don't look at the screen. So rather than having to dig through the menus, if I can just fly that straight path and tell the drone what to do with my voice in the background, I'm, that's yeah. just a that's a game changer. I, I would find it beneficial if I can say set shutter speed or set ISO yeah. or set, set, you know, if it had an aperture set aperture to whatever because you know when you're when you're finally when you're flying your object or whatever it is you're doing it would be so cool too if you can control the gimbal pitch or you can set certain certain points with it i mean there, there's a lot of different things that i think they're they're just only scratching the surface but i agree to the extent that i think unique is sort of the you know the pioneer for these gesture-based controls and these voice controls 
And I guess the changes that they've made here where they were, you know, keeping a full set of staff out in California, cutting that back and then trimming things up is working for them. I know the unique uh, Mantis Q won on a bunch of awards last year. I don't know. You, I don't know. You remember when we were walking through the unique booth, that was like their pride and joy of the show. They had it like, like they had a bunch of them up on pedestals and they had like that award that they won was sitting like right there front and center. Yeah, but uh, what, what we didn't other, get a lot of time in that. What other I drone mean, was released? What other? I mean, what what, what um, even they, were the they did, What even were the awards? I don't know. I mean, they could have got honorable mention. I don't know, but they had that award. They were the only booth that had like a, a CES award. So I mean, I go. Who knows? I don't know. Participation award. <laughs> I don't know. Well, do you know when these are going to be in stock? Do you have any idea? Um, it's letting me add it to the cart right now. It's not giving me a, a shipping date. Um, so my, my guess is they're probably they're probably ready to ship if, if I didn't know any better. You know, I you know it's six six ninety nine. I'm just that's I mean, it's a lot. I mean, to take a, a chance on the other thing I don't know is like unique support nowadays. You know, here's or how some, their returns work. Here's something that I think is is kind of a way to sum up this drone and maybe all of Unique's drones, uh, they're just a little bit too late. Like, if this drone was released a year ago, a year and a half ago, like, maybe a little bit after the Mavic Air was released, then okay. Like, I, I would I would be all, all about it. Um, but it, now it's just like, it's all recycled stuff that I've seen in so many other drones. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know how well it's going to do because... There's so many other people that had the opportunity to go and purchase a Mavic Air, and now I I, I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I I um I agree. I mean, it it is weird, and it was funny. I was I was te- and Zach, I was just texting Zach about this. I said, "Hey, it looks like they're shipping on their website," and he responds to me, "Oh, they're still in business." <laughs> that's, Come on, that's like your joke right there. He's stealing your joke. I know, I know, and I didn't even, pre- I didn't even like preempt him with that one. That was all him. But you know, it, it is weird. Like I feel like a lot of these companies that are producing drones now are finally getting the trickle down tech from the Mavic Air. I feel like the Mavic Air was sort of the drone that started this mini craze. We can say that it was the original Mavic, but the tech we have today in the Mavics, the new Mavics. And what you see in the Evo and a lot of other drones really stems from the Mavic Air. Like that R&R, that research and development team that put that drone is the reason why these drones took so long to hit the market. This is the why, you know, we had to wait till late summer and why probably the Evo wasn't available when it was available because of that little Mavic Air, how, how good it was when it first launched. It was really good, even though we give it a lot of crap for how loud it was and the Wi-Fi. There was a lot to like about that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm looking here. Um, first of all, it got a CES Innovation Award. Um, that was it. Yeah, that that was the Manus Q. It was it was a I don't know. The, the CES in in the CES Innovation Awards are based upon descriptive materials submitted to the judges. CTA did not verify the accuracy of any submissions or any claims made and did not test the item to which the award was given. Wait, what? The judges Wait, didn't even test the, the they basically just submitted all this information about the Manus Q and got the award. The judges didn't even verify it. That's kind of what it says. It says CTA oh, did God. not verify the accuracy of any submission or any claims made. Uh that that's pretty wild. Um but yeah, man, I I totally agree with you. The, the Mavic Air was so good and when I went to the Mavic Air event, I really thought we were going to get a Mavic 2. And when I saw the Mavic Air, I was like, wait, what? It's it's not the Mavic 2? And hearing about all of this stuff they fit into the Mavic Air was incredible. It had a better camera. It had a higher bit rate. Um, it still had a he great had flight time. He had it in his time. pocket, for God's sakes. He had three I mean, of them. When, when he, he pulled out three from his pockets. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he, you know, who was, who was that guy? He was one hell of a keynote speaker. He, um, you know, uh, Michael Perry was his name from DJI. He actually. That's mo- it, Michael Perry. Yeah, he moved on and he's actually working with Boston Dynamics. Okay. Well, so, that, that seems suiting. He's not going to be putting robots in his pockets, though. Y- well, he actually, uh, I mean, look, these drones are robots, right? They, they were in their pocket. 
Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. But anyways, that was impressive when he pulled those out and how small it was. And and you know what? I'll give the Mavic Air credit. That was one of the most durable drones I ever had. I mean, I slammed that thing straight <laughs> into a tree <laughs> with with the obstacle avoidance off. I mean, I, it took some falls and never once did I ever pick it up and say, oh, it's damaged or broken. No, it was always ready to go. I mean, that's that's a lot to say. And I mean, I, I would love to see more of that from drones, you know, in the future is to be much more durable, be able to take some hits. You know, this is totally unrelated and it probably doesn't even matter. <laughs> um, but the Manus Q, like the actors that they have in the video is the same in the Manus G. They use the same actors for is the really? video. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Y- you know what? I did, because I remember that girl in the bikini. I was like, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, did she you? She looks literally the same. Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> looks the same. Um, well, I, you know what? The video, the video is just, I don't know. I think it's far-fetched, like the quality that we're seeing from that. Yeah, you know, I, I there's no way to... Th- all those product videos are fluff. There's no way to tell exactly what it's going to be until somebody gets it, until somebody posts a video about it. I f- I'm really interested I f- to see I feel it like flying. I wish- you know what I wish we had is a camera conspiracies for drones, like a drone conspiracies segment. You ever watch that guy, ca- uh, drone camera conspiracies? Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan, dude. His comedy is 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 just on point, man. Yeah, no, I I laugh I laugh harder at my dirty room, <laughs> meaning I don't laugh at all. <laughs> um, so you are a twisted soul. So look, just a little recap: Phantom Four not going to be sold in the United States anymore. Kind of a bummer, but look, there, there's a lot of other great options aside the Phantom 4. If you're really looking for 4K at 60 frames per second, and that's like your number one, um, I guess... Uh, Evo is going to be your jam right now. Yeah, if, the, if that's your number one thing you need in a drone, you are just going to have to get to Evo. I don't see the allure. Um, I don't see it. And that was the other thing. That's the other thing. Did you notice how a lot of these manufacturers are yanking 24 frames per second? Yeah, that's so weird. Because I, I didn't realize it, but when we looked at the X Dynamics unit, that didn't have 24 frames per second. Wow. Yet they touted it as it, they touted it as a cinematic drone. Yeah. Um, this one doesn't have it. It's sort of odd that they're removing 30 frames or 24 frames per second. But yeah, um, I guess that that's that's gonna sort of wrap this one up. I know it's a little bit shorter than normal, but uh, that's sort of the the recap, the news, the gossip, I guess. Yeah, and um, so. Ken is coming up on September 13th to Philadelphia. We'll probably be able to record a podcast together. Maybe we can do something special and do a video special or something, but we'll Yo, see. Oh, that, that would throw people off. I don't know. I, I don't want to confuse anybody. I think <laughs> we're bringing it back, but we'll, we'll have to do something special. We're definitely going to get a lot of flight in. Yeah, I'm um, excited. It's going to be a good time. Um, I'm so stoked. I love going up to Philly. Let us know what you guys think about the drones released as well as the drones pulled by DJI. Um, it just feels like a very weird time for drones uh, across the board. It's just like there's there's nothing substantial to talk about. There's nothing substantial that's coming out. So we'll really have to see what, what happens in the future. Um, I'm talking maybe even next year as we get into the holiday season because uh, things are a little bit dry right now. Very dry. But uh, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. If you haven't already, you can check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, and of course here on YouTube. And uh, don't forget to drop the video a like and uh, make sure you hit subscribe so you can be here when we launch new episodes of the podcast. Yep. All sounds good, guys. Thanks for tuning in and we will catch you later.